We'll start now. Uh, I would like first to uh, introduce and thank the chairpersons, Dr. Akhmar, Dr. Ahmad Hamada, Dr. Mustafa Shazli, Dr. Mohammed Mahmoud, Dr. Akhmar. Uh, we will start with the first uh, case with Dr. Heidi Ayman now. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Sarok Zakaria, for the invitation. And thank you so much, uh, Professor Ashraf Omar, for the opportunity uh, to present in this uh, uh, eminent uh, conference. Uh, our first case uh, today, um, can you please uh, move the slides? Next, please. Yes, please. Next, please. Our first case is Mrs. D.A.S., a 65-year-old female patient who was diabetic on oral, uh, uh, oral anti-glycemic uh, drugs and hypertensive on diuretics, both for 25 years. Uh, the patient has a history for chronic HCV infection, which was diagnosed five years ago, for which she received uh, directly acting antivirals in the form of Sophos Bivera Daclitis Vera for 12 weeks, and she achieved SBR12. Next, please. <laughs> Um, the patient uh, uh, was ac accidentally discovered to have HCC six months ago while doing a transabdominal ultrasonography. No other cancers or comorbidities uh, were present and her BMI was 39.5 kilograms per meter square. Next, please. Regarding her, la her laboratory results, her hemoglobin was 10.6, TSC 11, platelets 315. Her total bilirubin was 0.75 over a direct of 0.22. Her INR was one and the PT 14.6 and albumin of 3.5. The ALT was 16 and AST 11, alkaline phosphatase 79, creatinine 1.67 and her alpha fetal protein was 61.5. Next please. The patient's child score was a child A6 and her performance status was zero. Next, please. On transabdominal ultrasonography, the liver appeared uh, enlarged and fiber fatty with a fine irregular surface. A large solid hepatic focal lesion was seen in the right lobe segment seven measuring 8.3 times 5.5 with the vascular signals on Doppler study. There were no intrahepatic bitty radical dilatation or uh, porta vein thrombosis. The gold bladder was, um, uh, showed a chronic calcular cholecystitis and her kidneys showed bilateral per parenchymal renal disease. Next, please. Her fiber scan study showed uh, an 8.6 kilopascal, giving a result of F2 to 3. Next, please. The triphasic CT showed an average in size liver with a non-uniform attenuation with two lesions in segments uh, seven and eight. The largest measured 85 times 70 millimeters and the smaller was 20 times 17 millimeters. The pattern of enhancement was a weak enhancement in both the arterial and the portal phases. Uh, there were no significant lymph nodes and the portal vein was patent, no metastasis and the spleen was normal with no ascites. Next, please. Uh, here are the images um, of the arterial phase of the triphasic study. Uh, Professor uh, Mohamed Hosni, can you please um, give us your comment on the uh, CT images? Uh, what about uh, to the chairperson? So, Dr. Mohamed Shaker, uh, can you uh, share us with these uh, images? صباح الخير دكتور احمد حسني وجميع الساده الاساتذه اللي معانا الحقيقه الصور بالنسبه لي اتس فيري سمول اي كانت جادج فروم هير اكشولي اوكي سو فروم ذا ايمجز هير وي كان سي ذات ذير از تو هايبو فاسكولار اور نون فاسكولار ليجنز ار سين ان ان ذا رايت لوب اوف ذا ليفر از يو سي هير سيجمنت 8 اند انكروتشنج اون سيجمنت 7 it's not hypervascular on uh, arterial phase and the same enhancement with less, less, a little bit more obvious in the border phase here. Uh, it, uh, it's not vascular uh, lesion. So okay. uh, have a lot of uh, differential diagnosis here. Uh, a patient, of course, is a cirrhotic. So what do you think, Dr. Mohamed Cech? 
طبعا being cirrhotic patient chronic parenchymal liver disease uh, history of viral infection uh, we should consider hepatocellular carcinoma as the first option actually however we have uh, here atypical criteria for hepatocellular carcinoma and also alpha fetoprotein is not uh, diagnostic so uh, i would um, go in this case for more radiological investigation first before thinking about biopsy i would do a contrast mri with diffusion uh, study to see if there is any uh, diffusion restriction and uh, more characterization of the lesion if the mri is conclusive well and good if not we will proceed for biopsy <laughs> The uh, images here uh, give you a, uh, uh, an idea about the grading or uh, uh, about the grading of this lesion. If it's an HCC, so if it's low grade, uh, moderately uh, differentiated. Being being hypovascular and will define the lesion, so it is low grade hepatocellular carcinoma. Will differentiate it hepatocellular carcinoma if it is hepatocellular carcinoma, and actually it will uh, be mostly hepatocellular carcinoma. But we should do more confirmation. Uh, before doing any management of the case. Okay, so Dr. Ashraf Amar and Dr. Uh, uh, about this case. Dr. Hosni, thank you. I do agree with Dr. Shaker. According to the guidelines, we have to proceed for liver biopsy. So far, if the, the non-invasive uh, uh, imaging uh, are not conclusive, we, we have to proceed for liver biopsy. And I, be, I believe that in the near future, the, the biopsy, the need of the liver biopsy may be increasing or will be increasing because most of the new treatment uh, would, would be uh, uh, immune therapies and the immune therapy might, might need uh, molecular markers or might need some uh, staging workup like uh, uh, the poorly differentiated or well differentiated tumors. I think this would this uh, uh, data uh, would be crucial before starting treatment. Uh, who are the two second? Start the uh, next. Uh, and other tumor markers are not elevated, Yagama? Yeah. Negative, yeah, Dr. Uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Shrazli. Negative. Alpha to protein negative. Who are the two second? Another imaging modality first before uh, going to the biopsy. هو ممكن برضو ال ال الاوبشن الثاني ان احنا ممكن الديسجاما كاربوكسي بروثرومبين اللي هو ال ال بيفكا 2 برضو مايت بي كونكلوسيف حاجه زي كده يعني اف ال الديسجاما كاربوكسي بروثرومبين از شوتنج ده هيبقى كونكلوسيف فور اتش سي سي احنا ما بنستخدموش كتير الحقيقه لكن الحقيقه بره برضو وخصوصا في اليابان وفي الفار ايست بيستخدموه وليه دايجنوستيك فاليو كبيره الحقيقه لكن عندنا لو ما كانش افيلبل اي ثينك وي وي مايت بروسيد فور زي ما قال الدكتور شاكر ممكن لو كانت الام ار اي هتبقى مفيده بالنسبه لنا وتدينا مور كرايتيريا ذات مايت كونفيرم الاتش سي سي خلاص ويل اند جود ما كانش البايوبسي ما فيهاش وعايز اقول ان البايوبسي ما فيهاش مشكله الليجن كبير قوي وسهل قوي البيركوتينس بايوبسي سهل قوي بالنسبه لاي حد يشتغل فيها يعني تكون حاجه كولانجيو كارسينوما برضو طبعا انا ما مع... اتفق معاك يا دكتور لان الاتيبيكال اتش سي سي دي عاده بتبقى غالبا بتبقى كومبايند كولانجيو اتش سي سي او او كولانجيو صح في حالات كتير قوي بتبقى كومبايند كولانجيو اتش سي سي عشان كده يمكن انا اميل ان احنا نبروسيد فور بايوبسي على طول لانه لو كانت كومبايند كولانجيو اتش سي سي الموضوع هيبقى مختلف شويه او لو كانت طلعت بيورلي كولانجيو كارسينوما الموضوع هيبقى مختلف خالص في التريتمنت وفي المانجمنت. طب السؤال للدكتور محمد شاكر والدكتور حسني هل الام ار اي ديفيوجن هيقدر يفرق لي بين الكولانجيو كارسينوما والهيباتسور كارسينوما ولا الديفيوجن برضه هم الاثنين هيبينوا ان هم زي بعض في الكاركترز يعني. دكتور شاكر معانا؟ انت معانا يا دكتور شاكر؟ ايوه الدكتور الدكتور شاذلي بيسال سؤال مهم جدا هل الدايناميك ام ار اي 
هتبقى مفيدة to differentiate cholangio versus HCC أو أو كولانجيو اتش سي سي كومباوند كولانجيو اتش سي سي احنا عندنا حاجتين في الـ في الام ار اي فور كاركترايزيشن اوف ذا ليجن الباترن اوف انهانسمنت والديفيوجن ريستريكشن اوكي الديفيوجن ريستريكشن ده بيقول لي ان في مالجننت ليجن ممكن يبقى هيباتسر كارسينوم ممكن يبقى كولانجيو كارسينوما الباترن اوف انهانسمنت ممكن يبقى نقطة ديفرنشيشن ما بينهم الهباتس كارسنوما بتبقى مور انهانسد في الارتيريال فيز وهتبقى في ووش اوت في البورتو فينس وفي الديليد فيز ده مش بيحصل في الكولانجيو كارسنوما الكولانجيو كارسنوما ممكن تبقى هايبو دنس اول ثرو او ممكن تبقى هايبو دنس في الارتيريال فيز وبعدين يحصل شوية انهانسمنت في البورتو فينس فيز فدي ممكن تبقى بوينت اوف ديفرنشيشن ما بينهم تمام يعني يهيالي يا دكتور شاذلي لو كومباين زي ما حضرتك قلت دكتور اشرف وانا آه. متفق ان ممكن تبقى كومباين في الحقيقه هي آه اتيبيكال برضه هي مش كونكلوزيف قوي فهنضطر فعلا ناخد بايوكسي في الاخر تمام ده اللي انا قصدي يا دكتور اشرف والدكتور شاكر ان هو العيان ده الباترن اوف فاسكولاريزيشن احنا اوريدي عارفينه من الترايفيزيك اللي موجود انما هو الديفيوجن هو ده اللي هيبين لي هل هي مالجنت ولا بنايه ااا آه امبوس سواء كولانجيو كارسينوما ولا ميكسد او هيباتسور كارسينوما الديفيوجن حبين ان هي بس مالجنت وخلاص ولا انا غلطان في هذا الكلام لا كلامك مظبوط جدا طبعا هو يمكن اللي بيفرق شويه حضرتك او اللي بتحصل مع الكولانجيو كارسينوما والهيمانجيوما دي بنشوف حالات كتير جدا ان هي اتشخصت بناين هيمانجيوما وهي في الحقيقه كانت كولانجيو كارسينوما ايفن حتى بالام ار اي لان الباترن قريب شويه من بعض. اه اوكي. تمام. So in this case uh, the decision of our MDT at uh, Kasra Aini Hospital was to uh, go straight for a liver biopsy uh, and not for an MRI. Um, Uh, because يعني as um, حضراتكم قلتوا uh, ان يعني احنا كده كده يعني ال vascularization pattern campaign في triphasic CT it was a large size lesion واحنا كنا عندنا more than one differential in mind بما فيهم الكولانجو كارسينوما او انها تبقى متاستاتيك um, ادونو كارسينوما فقلنا ان احنا يعني ن cut precious time and go straight for a liver biopsy uh, a liver biopsy بينت ان في a high grade carcinoma of hepatocellular origin Uh, the patient's BCSC stage uh, now is considered stage B uh, as the patient has uh, two uh, hepatic uh, focal lesions uh, with uh, child A and a performance status zero. Um, so uh, what do you think, um, يعني رأي حضراتكم next step تبقى مفروض نعمل ايه في ال patient C? The previous slide please. الدكتور حماده موجود والدكتور محمد محمود موجود معانا؟ اشرف حاجه صغيره؟ نعم حماده ازيك يا دكتور؟ ايه صباح الخير يا دكتور اشرف؟ دكتور حماده صباح الفل ازي اخبارك؟ اخبارك عامل ايه اخبارك الله يخليك كله تمام الحمد لله عايزين نشترك كلنا في الـ في الديسيجن اوف مع الدكتور بقيه الاساتذه والدكتور شاذلي البيست لاين اوف اوف مانجمنت فور ذيس كيس But uh, my friends and colleagues, number one, you discuss now in the first case. And Professor Shazdi said he wants to pray a Goma. I think you will pray next week. Number <laughs> <laughs> two, our conference is broadcasted all over the world. We better speak in English. Thank you. Okay. Okay, now, so, uh, Dr. Ashraf, we have now uh, a case with uh, PCLC stage B, uh, uh, two focal lesions in the liver, patient cirrhotic. Uh, so, uh, what the guidelines option for this type of treatment? Yes, this, according to the guidelines, it's an intermediate stage, PCLC B. So, the, the first, the, time, the treatment of choice would be uh, transarterial chemo embolization. Okay. So my question to Professor uh, Mustafa Shazli, uh, do you think in this uh, particular patient um, after uh, tra transarterial chemoembolization, 
um, the option of uh, transplantation uh, would be uh, uh, possible or uh, given her BMI, she has a BMI of 39.5. I know this, this is a problem uh, being high BMI, but uh, uh, I would suggest that we go for this and then uh, uh, the test will do two things. We'll see the response. And at the same time, we can discover other lesions if there is or not. Uh, and if it is downstaged, we can go after that for transplantation, uh, putting in consideration that there is no other extra hepatic lesions. I don't know if we agree or not about this. Yes, I agree. Of course, I do agree. Because the main, the main, Aim of uh, of the management of the management of any patient is the cure. So yeah. intermediate is a, it's not a, a curative management. If we can uh, use the taste as a bridge for liver transplantation, this would be the best option for the patient. I think yes. Uh, Dr. Shaker, uh, what was strategy? Dr. Muhammad Shaker and Professor Muhammad Hosni. Um, uh, given the hypovascular nature of the lesion, do you think that this will, can affect the outcome of uh, transarterial uh, chemoembolization, or um, it would be irrelevant in this case? Actually, no, no at all. We can do vascular uh, HSC by transarterial treatment. The HSC, as we all know, it's supplied only by the hepatic artery. There is yes. no other mean for the feeders of the hepatic carcinoma. So definitely this lesion, although being hypovascular, it is uh, at the end supplied by the hepatic artery. And when we go for transarterial treatment, we will find the plush of this lesion and the feeder and we can catheterize and uh, do it. No problem at all. Okay, thank you so much. Can we... Uh, okay, so... Um, uh, our first take-home message in this case uh, is that um, um, the uh, diagnosis of hepatocellular carcinoma should be uh, the first consideration in a patient uh, with a previous history of, of uh, uh, HCV, chronic HCV infection, even if the patient has a low to moderate grade fibrosis because um, this does not affect achieving SVR, usually does not affect the um, incidence of uh, a future hepatocellular carcinoma. And uh, the second uh, take home message is to take into account that um, HCC can have more than one atypical presentation and that uh, uh, the mimickers of HCC should always be kept in mind while making a differential diagnosis. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Heidi. So now we can uh, progress with uh, Dr. Shadi Ghazali, who will present the second speech here. Yeah. Thank you very much, um, uh, Muhammad, and um, I'm happy to be with uh, 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 my professors. Uh, and uh, I'd like to present a case uh, quickly as uh, we're running out of time. Um, the case um, presented to us from a 53 year old male patient, uh, hypertensive, uh, not diabetic. Uh, he's a non-HCV patient, uh, received uh, 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 um, DAC treatment since uh, 2015. Um, it was uh, accidentally discovered, a hepatic focal lesion by ultrasound uh, in the HCV campaign. Um, uh, he has a cirrhotic liver with an alpha p protein of around 67 and a child score of uh, A6. Uh, a fibro scan was done and uh, he showed um, a med metaphor score of F4. Um, we did an upper GI, which showed uh, hypertensive uh, gastropathy. The right CT of uh, abdominal pelvis uh, show um, cirrhotic liver and um, a single well-defined hepatic focal lesion um, measuring around uh, 5.6 centimeters in diameter in segment 7 and showed um, enhancement in the arterial phase and washout in uh, venous phase. Uh, this is of um, the arterial phase uh, with the lesion uh, very clear in segment seven with um, also a, a, a clear vascular supply as well. Uh, uh, if you can all see that, 
in um, supplying the, the tumor. Um, and then this is the venous phase, uh, showing a peripheral enhancement and um, a washout. Washout, yes. And I think uh, the diagnosis was quite straightforward that this was um, a typical radiological uh, picture of an HCC. Um, but we had some uh, uh, discussions around the condition of the liver uh, because um, as of this um, presentation, uh, this is a candidate for uh, liver resection. But before we proceed to such um, a procedure, we needed to assess more the uh, ability of the liver to um, withstand such uh, a resection. So we had a discussion about the hepatic venous portal gradient, which I would like just to do, um, show a quick introduction about it. Um, it represents the gradient, as we all know, between the portal vein and the hepatic vein, and it's uh, considered the best method available now uh, to evaluate the presence and severity of portal hypertension. Uh, the portal hypertension is defined as being more than five millimeters, but the clinically significant portal hypertension is defined as more than uh, 10 millimeters of mercury. There were, in, in the literature, uh, some um, uh, studies uh, put some sort of staging around the uh, um, liver, uh, degree of liver fibrosis and its relation to the HPPG. Um, and uh, this is one of the, the uh, uh, studies that showed um, a correlation between uh, the increased um, uh, hepatic venous portal uh, gradient and the uh, degree of decompensation in the liver. And for this, for our case, uh, this is significant because, as we said, that this is a cirrhotic liver with fibrous control, it's F4. So as you can see, F4 can range from uh, stage one, which is comp uh, compensated, uh, up to stage four, which is um, uh, decompensated. So we have to decide first, um, uh, our patient belongs to which category of these, and the best way would be to measure the uh, hepatic venous portal gradient um, to make sure that he lies within um, either stage one or, uh, well, we, we as a matter of fact, we prefer that it's within stage one because stage two, which is more than uh, 10 or between 10 and 12, is kind of considered a borderline. So it's not uh, the optimum uh, condition for the patient, but less than 10 would be uh, more optimum. But of course, more than 12, we would uh, totally exclude uh, the possibility of uh, doing a, a hepatectomy. So, um, Again, uh, uh, was reportedly associated with post-operative uh, liver dysfunction and mortality after uh, liver resection in HCP and uh, and uh, liver cirrhosis. Therefore, preoperative uh, measurement of the hepatic venous portal. Okay. That's what we did in this patient, and it came out to be uh, uh, with uh, nine, nine millimeters of mercury. We did that in collaboration with our uh, radiological unit, Dr. Ahmed Hosni, who was the one who uh, performed uh, the procedure the, of measuring the hepatic venous portal gradient. And uh, when it came out as nine millimeters mercury, um, then we decided that this uh, patient is safe enough to proceed for surgery. And of course, this is, um, we, you all are familiar of uh, such a classification of the types of surgery that we can do. But uh, in this uh, specific case, we uh, didn't go for an anatomical resection. We tried to preserve as much uh, liver uh, uh, tissue as possible. So we uh, went for a non-anatomical uh, wedge resection um, and um, the, the post-operative follow-up um, showed a smooth post-operative recovery with a discharge from the ICU on day three and a hospital discharge on uh, day 11 uh, and uh, no recurrence in the scans then done after uh, uh, three months and six months and there's, there was no post-operative uh, liver decompensation. And um, if, if I would just like here to mention the, the takeaway message here is that we have to consider 
seriously uh, uh, involving uh, measurement of uh, hepatic venous pressure gradient um, and in cases where uh, we have evidence of uh, uh, portal hypertension to make sure which uh, class of patient we have if uh, he will have a, a high risk for acute liver failure following the resection or not. And um, some studies uh, suggest doing it routinely, but I think that this is still not uh, established, fully established yet. And but we need to consider it seriously in, in a lot of patients, especially with large tumors and uh, um, a liver that we are not very sure of uh, its um, quality yet. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Shadi. Can I uh, suggest something? Uh, uh, I myself, we don't do routine this measurement uh, so long there is no esophageal uh, uh, viruses which de uh, reflects the degree of portal hypertension. Would you agree that if we, we, we should do this uh, uh, venous pressure measurement uh, when there is viruses or uh, what do you think? Uh, well, uh, I think that having in this patient, the upper GI showed uh, portal hypertensive gastropathy, yeah. which was um, some, uh, a sign of portal hypertension. Uh, so this coupled with uh, the, um, um, uh, having um, a, a quite a, a large tumor, not, not a small one, plus uh, a metaverse score of F4, I think that this combination uh, is also uh, a candidate for doing it, for doing this measurement. Um, I, of course, I agree that having uh, varices is, well, uh, it will make it uh, um, uh, obligatory for us to do the, the measurement. But even if we don't have uh, frank varices and we still have some signs, I think it's better to make, for example, if it's nine, if the, the portograin here came up as, uh, as nine, if it, if it comes up at, as 10, for example, this will be a sign also to just um, uh, be more careful with the resection or um, expect some um, uh, sort of liver dysfunction after uh, the operation. So it depends per case. And I totally agree with you, Dr. Mustafa, that it has to be considered per case. And it's not just an obligatory thing that we should do in, uh, in each and every case. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Shadi, for the excellent uh, So now we will present the third case. I'll present the third case. Uh, uh, so I, I'll present it very quickly. This is a patient with hepatitis C virus and under, underwent DDA treatment six months ago. Uh, he presented to us uh, after three months of DDA treatment by abdominal pain and distension. Of course, all the labs and uh, ultrasound images, the labs, the patient was ECOG zero, total bilirubin 0.9, alpha protein was highly elevated, 64,000. The patient was a child A. Sonar showed a large heterogeneous mass in the left hepatic lobe with uh, left portal vein thrombosis. So uh, we, we always expected this after uh, DDA treatment. So this is, uh, we performed a triphasic CT scan to the patient. As we see here, uh, Dr. Shaker, can, uh, can you comment with us about this uh, triphasic CT? Dr. Shaker, do you hear us? Can, do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, I can see these photos clearly. So we have uh, a large heterogeneous enhancing uh, neoplastic lesion involving whole uh, left loop and maybe also the adjacent part of uh, segment eight of right loop. Uh, it shows uh, enhancement, intense enhancement in the arterial phase going with the hepatocellular carcinoma and we have a very high alpha fetoprotein, so diagnosis confirmed and we have left portal branch invasion. Okay, so Dr. Ashraf and Dr. Uh, this is the coronal uh, CT images here. Uh, as we see the mass involving all the left loop as Dr. Shaker said. So uh, what do you think, Dr. So this patient now is BCLCC child 2A. So uh, Dr. Ashraf and Dr. Uh, Mohammed Mahmoud, what do you think? So the options of treatment for this patient now, he is 53 years old. Dr. Ashraf, do you hear me? 
uh, according to his liver, we have to, to evaluate his liver status properly. And if his liver profile is okay, we, we may proceed for systemic therapy according to the guidelines. And I would like to remind you that the guidelines now, uh, starting from uh, a few uh, months ago, recently uh, FD cleared a new a systemic therapy, immune therapy, which is the immune checkpoints, uh, combined therapy, immune, che immune checkpoints with multi-kinase inhibitor. It would be a new landmark for the treatment of such cases, the, the uh, large lesions or lesions with portal vein invasion. Uh, the, the, the previous uh, guidelines, systemic therapy is sorafenib or levetinib, but I think in, in the near future, the immune checkpoints would uh, take over uh, because of the remarkable, marvelous results over the uh, 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 previous uh, systemic therapy. Uh, do you have any comment? I think if there is no extra hepatic uh, lesions, uh, the, 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 uh, the alpha fetoprotein is very high, which might suggest uh, extra hepatic uh, spread, and uh, or uh, uh, due to the vascular invasion. If there is no extra hepatic, I, I would suggest to go for radio embolization if uh, the patient can afford to do it. Dr. Mohammed Mahmoud? Yes, I, I don't hear you. Can you uh, raise your voice, please? Can you hear me? لا حضرتك ممكن تعرف شوية من المايك بس. Okay, okay. Do you hear me now? لا الصوت وقت. صلاة دنيت يا جماعة. Okay. Do you have any comment, Dr. Shakir? I agree. I agree with Dr. Mustafa for the option of uh, radio embolization. The lesion is, uh, it seems very aggressive with very high alpha fetoprotein. And radio embolization may give us uh, a more rapid result than the systemic treatment. And there is no objection that we start with radio embolization. We can continue with the systemic treatment if there is no extra hepatic uh, spread. This is my opinion. Thank you. So I bought this slide to know the, how we can deal with the guidelines. So conventional case, despite some uh, uh, junior hepatologists uh, ask us to do this, but I don't think this is right. And also drug living beats. So Ratnab Ab, Dr. Ashraf Omar said, this is uh, one of the options. Uh, or of course, as Dr. Shaker said, we started to, to treat the patient with Y90 radio embolization. Three months later, the patient is still child BOO A. Alpha fetoprotein decreased uh, to 380. And this is the follow-up uh, CT image after six months. Uh, 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 as we see here, complete uh, necrosis of the left lobe mass with disappearance of the left portal vein thrombosis, uh, no enhancement in the left lobe and the adjacent area of the right lobe. Do you agree with me, Dr. Shaker, about this? Sure. Okay, so uh, now we, uh, alpha p to between uh, 33. So uh, what do you think next? So we have now a great response. What's now? So uh, what, what do you think, Dr. Mustafa Shazli, Dr. Ashkafam? I think is if we can uh, wait for uh, six months and uh, there is no recurrence, I would go for uh, transplantation. I don't know you agree or not. I think we have to continue with systemic therapy uh, yes. to, prevent, to prevent the recurrence rate. And we have to test the biological behavior of the tumor, as Professor uh, Shazli said, uh, for an option of liver transplantation. So exactly that's what happened. So uh, we consulted the surgeon for surgical consultation. Uh, actually, the patient refused to do a liver transplantation. So uh, we, he underwent a left loop hepatectomy. Uh, for his tumor, he agreed about this operation, but he refused the liver transplantation. So this Physics scan 20, uh, physics CT scan 21 months after uh, our treatment. As you see here, the majority of the right foot uh, lips with uh, hepatectomy. Uh, do you have any comment, Dr. Shadi? That's a hepatectomy. A left hepatectomy, not the What is the aim of left hepatectomy? 
volumetry before. Uh, of course, of course uh, as you know uh, from the uh, papers uh, before that, uh, radium polarization, if you do a low radium polarization, the instance of compensation uh, 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 contra lat to us to uh, help you also to do a uh, uh, hepatectomy. But, but I mean, what's the aim of hepatectomy here? I think the aim is uh, to do a uh, potential security that the patient is repeat uh, the other option is the uh, transplant for another No, I mean the you don't hear me Mr. Mustafa. What, what's the aim of uh, doing a hepatectomy, I mean, in this patient? Uh, sometimes, uh, and we, we all, always in, uh, in uh, most of the patients, that the recurrence has come from the adjacent or the periphery of the previously treated tumors. So I think that the surgeon decided to do this to, to, to decrease the incidence of recurrence from uh, uh, left uh, loop lesions. So what do you think, Dr. Shekel? يعني انا اي ثينك ذات هافينج ا بورتال فينس رومبوز بيفور اند ويتش ديسابيرد باي ذا راديو امبوليزيشن ذا سيم ويل ابلاي فور ذا بورتال فين اند فور ذا تيومر از ويل اتسلف سو اي دونت نو اذ ذا رول رول فور هيباتيكتومي Uh, in this patient or not? Okay. Uh, PET CT after uh, three months also, though, as you see here, uh, patient is uh, completely free from any extra hepatic or uh, intrahepatic meds. Uh, so this is done in August 2019. And now uh, this is done this month, October 2020. This is a triphasic CT scan. Uh, so it's patient now uh, three years survival after uh, radium radiation after hepatectomy. So any comment, uh, Dr. Ashraf or Dr. Close monitoring, close monitoring for 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 the recurrence, and uh, according to his liver status, if uh, his liver status is not okay, okay, and if he is going for liver decompensation, I think uh, we have to proceed for liver transplantation. Dr. Mustafa? I agree with Dr. Ashraf, but uh, I didn't get an answer regarding the, 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 the role of hepatectomy. Did it add or not? Yani we want to know about it. Uh, and what about the literature uh, uh, regarding uh, the role of uh, hepatectomy after radioembolization? Um, I, agree, I agree with you, Dr. Mustafa, and I think this is the main um, uh, point of this case that uh, we should co consider, um, should it be considered this option after radioembolization or not? Uh, I haven't seen the literature in uh, uh, discussing this issue, but I think it's worth, worth uh, uh, tracking, and uh, uh, this is a good case to um, uh, to evaluate and to compare with uh, similar cases who had only radioactive embolization because to justify, like you said, if, if, if uh, radioembolization alone has dissolved the, the portal vein thrombus and the tumor, then would it have been enough or the surgical option has added something? I think the surgical option has been and, put. Uh, I think the surgical option has been put because they wanted the, the surgeon to work. That's it. And that, uh, it, 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 I think it will be helpful as well if we get the result of the pathological specimen, the pathology of the specimen resected. Uh, where is, uh, did they find any active cells or not? Because if they did find active cells, this would uh, uh, I mean advocate uh, our role in uh, doing hepatectomy. Uh, if we can revise the pathology of uh, the excised specimen, will be very helpful. Yes, sir. I agree. Yes. Uh, Dr. Becker, do you have any comment about this? 
No, actually, I think the um, radio embolization was enough and the for follow up uh, for uh, the possibility of liver transplantation. Uh, this patient has a very good chance, actually. The tumor biology is very favorable. So he has a chance for liver transplantation. And Dr. Hosni. Dr. Hosni. Uh, don't think that uh, this patient need to know him she has a systemic therapy like sorafenib for life to prevent recurrence. Dr. Ashraf, do you have any? Well, I, uh, the, uh, when we go back to the literature and uh, uh, the, the, the sorafenib or the systemic therapy, sorafenib or and or lymvatinib has no significant uh, change on the overall survival. So uh, the, uh, I, I believe that uh, only monitoring for the early recurrence and the biological behavior of the tumor and the plan for a liver transplantation as soon as possible, this would be the best option for the patient. Uh, yeah, actually, we tried with the patient, but uh, I don't know. The patient refused, refused to do a transplantation. I think that's why, uh, yeah, decided to do a, a some the systemic therapy, as Dr. Mohammed Mahmoud said, and in, in the form of lymphatinib or sorafenib, did not change the overall survival in the in the long term. And uh, it does not uh, prevent the recurrence, Dr. Ashraf. No, and when when we we and when we are revising the literature, and uh, uh, the literature there was a randomized controlled trial, uh, uh, TACE plus sorafenib, or tear with with without sorafenib, and testing the overall survival, it has no significant change. Uh, 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 so, uh, the addition of sorafenib and or lymvatinib, or lymvatinib did not work on the overall survival. Thank you Dr. Hatter, for this uh, elegant comment. So now we have the last case with uh, Dr. Hind Shusha. Dr. Hind, are you with us here? Yes, Dr. Mohammed. Good morning, dear professors and colleagues. I will present my uh, case uh, this time. Next, please. Next. No, this is too much. Next. <laughs> well, um, my case is about a, a, a young boy. He presented to our clinic immediately before uh, closing for the corona pandemic. When he presented to our clinic, he was 27 years old. But actually, he, his condition started when he was 19 years old in 2012. Uh, he was a, a, young boy, a young boy of no, uh, not diabetic, not hypertensive, of no special habits of medical importance. Uh, single, he was not known uh, to have a hepatitis uh, infection. Uh, the patient uh, accidentally discovered to have a hepatic focal lesion during uh, abdominal ultrasound examination for uh, complaining of right hypochondrial pain. Uh, this is his first abdominal ultrasonography that revealed a large solid echogenic vascular mass lesion is seen occupying a good deal of the left lobe. Uh, the mass was encroaching on the medial aspect of the right lobe and measuring uh, 9.5 by, uh, by 8 centimeters. Otherwise, his abdominal ultrasound was totally free. Um, the next, so the patient was advised to perform uh, dynamic MRI. Next. Uh, actually, this is an illustrative uh, image. This is not the image of the patient because he couldn't um, uh, bring all his uh, CT images, only the reports of his image because it was over uh, nine, year, uh, nine years. The dynamic MRI revealed a large well-defined ovoid focal lesion in the left lobe measuring 10.1 by 12 centimeters with iso-intense signal in T1. Um, uh, and relatively prior to ISO intense signal intensity in T2. Uh, 
In the contrast study of the MRI, it showed intense enhancement in the arterial phase and, po and portal phases with fair enhancement of the central scar in the delayed phase, with both the outline of the left, hep left hepatic lobe, otherwise normal findings. Next, please. The conclusion was a large left hepatic lobe benign looking focal lesion, likely focal nodular hyperplasia. However, the possibility of fibrolamellar carcinoma cannot be excluded. At this point, the patient was advised to perform a percutaneous biopsy for his focal lesion to confirm the diagnosis, whether benign or malignant. Yes. The uh, biopsy revealed hepatocellular carcinoma of fibrolamellar uh, type grade 2. Next. Um, well, fibrolamellar carcinoma was first described in 1956 in uh, 181 cases with a different demographics and risk factors compared to the standard HCC. It usually presents in young, uh, in young adults from 20 to 40 years old without gender bias, but with a, prediction, a pre um, predilection to Caucasians. Unlike HCCs, they, are not, they do not have an association with cirrhosis, alcoholism, or viral hepatitis infection. Next. Usually the clinical presentation is not, not specific with constitutional symptoms, abdominal pain, malaise or weight loss, and uh, maybe gynecomastia due to elevated estrone levels and lower uh, values on gross charts as these patients are usually uh, young. The pathology gives the characteristic uh, picture of fibrolamellar HCC with parallel fibrous strands in between the malignant tissue and fibrolamellar HCC, as we know, do not produce alpha fetoprotein. Next. Uh, 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 fibrolamellar HCC uh, typically are single large tumors on triphasic CT with dense fibrotic bands uh, uh, as in the pathology forming a central scar. This central scar is seen in 75% of cases which make it resemble um, uh, focal nodular hyperplasia. A few small calcifications are common in fibrolamellar HCC. Uh, regional lymphadenopathy are, are usually common, nearly 50% of cases, and the arterial enhancement uh, occurs in 80% of cases. The central scar typically shows persistent enhancement on delayed contrast uh, enhanced CT. Next. Uh, the, as, as we said, the lesion in the MRI in T1 typically iso to hypo intense to the liver, in T2 hypo to slightly hyper intense. And the contrast study usually show arterial phase heterogeneous enhancement and venous iso uh, with delayed iso to hypo intense. Nuclear medicine with technetium 99 silver colloid scans as the lesion uh, copper cells are neither present nor metabolically active in these tumors. There is no uptake of technetium in these uh, fibrolamellar HCC, so they, they do not show uptake, uh, unlike the focal nodular hyperplasia. Next. So the, uh, the main treatment for fibrolamellar HCC is the hepatic resection, and there is no evidence-based systematic therapy exists till now. Only clinical trials are running, and unresectable tumors are usually fatal. Uh, the survival uh, is affected by, by the number of the tumors, and the lesions that are larger than uh, five centimeters, vascular invasion, elevated alpha fetoprotein, and positive resection margins. Next. So the differential diagnosis will be the uh, standard hepatocellular carcinoma. Of course, they will be differentiated by the histology and the recent uh, fluorescent in situ hybridization, in addition to elevated alpha fetoprotein, uh, presence of calcification and central scar, and the demographics of the patient. The second differential diagnosis would be the focal nodular uh, hyperplasia. Next. Hepatic adenomas, hepatic metastasis, and large liver hemangiomas are also in the differential diagnosis, and they can be uh, differentiated by imaging. Next. Well, our patient underwent left hepatic resection uh, at the National Hepatology and Tropical Medicine Research Institute. Next. The surgical bed was free, and the patient was on regular follow-up triphasic CT every six months, and he was uh, very, uh, very good in follow-up. Next. 
In March 2015, 2015, the patient was free, but in March 2015, the patient developed recurrence at the operative bed. So, Dr. Mustafa Shazi or Dr. Shazi, do you have any comments about the recurrence uh, at the operative bed? Is it related to the technique of surgery itself? Um, no, I think I think it's more related to um, to uh, uh, the, the nature of the tumor, rather than the, the, the uh, and especially that the pathology shows that uh, there was a um, uh, resection free margin. So um, and here um, I would like to uh, uh, see literature if, uh, regarding this type of tumor recurrence and potentiality for recurrence, especially that this um, size. And mentioned that um, the bigger the size, the poorer the probably the higher probability of recurrence. So I think this is more related to the prognosis of the tumor itself. Uh, resection uh, margin was uh, free at the time of operation, and what was uh, the size of the resection margin free? Yes, the size of the lesion was 10 by 12 centimeters with free uh, resection margins on uh, uh, after pathological examination of the resected tumor. This was a recurrence after three years of resection. The recurrence here is because uh, it's worse with the size, as you mentioned, it's not so this is 10 centimeters. So this is a higher probability for recurrence. Um, I'm sorry, the voice is not clear. Was it, uh, the recurrence was at the time. Uh, recurrence. Uh, can you consider recurrence uh, as the same size after three years? I doubt. It might be recurrence in other area. Being 12 centimeters in size, it's a big. And the surface area, uh, the, surface, the rest of the river is near to the side. I think this is a de novo recurrence. Recurrence, it's not recurrence uh, 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 at the surgical margin. Because uh, if there was a recurrence at the surface margin, it would recur much earlier than three uh, years. Yes, sir, it could be an, a new tumor. Uh, I would suggest this. Did you consider any local regional therapy for these big tumors before? Uh, or is that also a reception like it is a system? Uh, I think that we could consider uh, one patient uh, before uh, the service of action, and we have to establish the technology of uh, accessibility. Try to uh, reduce the current as much as possible. Uh, but I think that the patient had the uh, right choice in the surgery. Um, so we can consider uh, uh, some cases. You have any comments here? What I was saying is that I think that this could um, uh, be a candidate for downstaging because it's a big, a big tumor. So we should discuss with the oncology uh, doctors and see if it's a uh, uh, downstaging tumor before the surgical option. Uh, and especially that this is uh, not um, um, an issue that we are used to it. Um, uh, and, different type of tumor and uh, uh, the recurrence is more with the bigger size. So I figure that uh, downstaging uh, with the um, uh, uh, oncology could reduce the recurrence, but of course we need to study this more and uh, look at literature uh, discussing this. Dr. Mohammed, do you have any comments? Uh, I have uh, two comments. Uh, one for uh, Dr. Hedi presentation. Uh, uh, the one of the most important differential diagnosis for hypovascular HTC is the lymphoma. 
I think we missed lymphoma as a differential diagnosis for this case. The second case for Dr. Shadi, I think intraoperative microwave is a very good option uh, for this uh, lesion with uh, minimal uh, side effects and, uh, and post-operative complications. Thank you. Uh, uh, um, I think this would, would have been the better option if the uh, hepatic venous portal gradient that I was discussing was uh, 10, for example, 10 or more. Then definitely this would have been uh, a better option. Thank you, Dr. Hint. Can you continue, please? Um, okay, next. Uh, that uh, triphasic CT study showed the uh, recurrent lesion as the operative bed measuring about 3.9 by 2.6 centimeters in diameter, displaying mild rather homogeneous arterial enhancement with portal and delayed washout. Next. Otherwise, the CT was free. A surgical resection was performed for the recurrent tumor, and the patient developed operative bed collection with impending abscess formation, reactive abdominal lymphadenopathy, and he was managed conservatively with antibiotics and resolved. Next. In 2015, the patient developed, a, a, okay, this is the recurrence. Next, this is the liver bi uh, the biopsy uh, of the recurrence that revealed the recurrent hepatocellular carcinoma grade two. Next. Um, uh, after that, the patient developed lung metastasis in with left upper loop paramediastinal solitary nodule with no evidence of recurrence or residual lesions in the liver. And surgical resection was performed for the lung lesion. Next, the lesion in the lung was 1.4 centimeters and it was resected. Next, but on uh, November 2016, the patient developed bilateral lung metastasis. Again, after resection of the previous lesion, he received the chemotherapy at the National Cancer Institute. And it, in 2017, the patient was prescribed uh, surafenib uh, uh, and the, he received it for two months and the patient developed regression of the lung lesions. Next. Uh, this is the report of triphasic CT scan after the patient received the chemotherapy and surafenib for two months uh, that showed interval regression regarding the size of bilateral pulmonary nodules the largest at the left lung base measuring about one centimeter in comparison to uh, the previous study. And the appearance has no significantly changed in comparison to the patient was on very quite, uh, good regular follow-up. Otherwise his liver was free. Next. Next. The patient continued free till December 2019. It is a rather stable few subpleural pulmonary nodules at the right, middle, and lower lung lobes, as well as small subpleural atelectatic bands. But in the abdominal study, revealed a newly developed soft tissue mass is seen at the porta hepatis, measuring about 4.2 by 3.6 centimeters, and another soft tissue uh, mass posterior to the portal vein measuring 5.5 uh, by 3.3 centimeters. And the patient was advised to perform bed scan to detect the nature of this focal lesion at the porta hepatis. Next. And bed scan, this is uh, a true, uh, an image of the patient. The bed scan showed a, a, so, a solid lesion at the porta hepatis of, of lymph node involvement. It measured at the bed scan five centimeters. Next. This is a photo of the lesion in the arterial phase showing arterial enhancement in front of the aorta. Next. This is a result of the PET scan that showed a neoplastic nature of the porta hepatis nodal lesion, five by 4.6 centimeters with no other hypermetabolic lesions even in the chest. At this point, the patient presented to our HCC multidisciplinary clinic at Castro Laini Hospital Cairo University. Next. So my dear professors, what do you think would be the next step? Um, well, we need to see the radiological uh, 
So the patient now, according to PET scan, is uh, does not know any actively uh, does not have any active lesions in the chest or in the liver. Apart from this lesion, this nodal lesion in the porta hepatis, his alpha fetoprotein is three. His performance status is zero. Well, um, if it's in the porta hepatis, we need to see exactly how the vascular structure. I think it's I'm more, sorry, the voice is not clear. If it's at the porta hepatis, as you described, then we need to know its relation to the other vascular structures. And um, I think that uh, surgery is not the best option here. And consider uh, um, another uh, sort of uh, uh, systemic therapy, as he responded well to systemic therapy as we can see from uh, 2015. Mohammed Hosni, what is your opinion? Uh, I would suggest here to do a perfect CT angiography for the, the abdomen to do a vascular supply to this region. You can enter super selective to this mass and embolize it, either to do a bland embolization or a drug eluding beef. And it looks like a vascular mass by the images, so maybe this is an option. Can we do a portal lymphadenectomy for this case, Dr. Shadi? Uh, well, as I can see from the last uh, report, it's not a, a problem of lymph nodes. There is a mass, right? Dr. Hand, isn't it a mass? Well, or it was it described as a nodal lesion, nodal uh, mass. Lymph node? Yes. Is a lymph node, Shadi? Well, if um, um, the portal, uh, uh, portal uh, structures are intact. Uh, yes, I guess uh, there can be a um, um, uh, possibility of, for example, lymph laparoscopic lymphadenectomy. Uh, but again, we have to assess the, uh, the hilum very well to make sure that it's not uh, infiltrating any other. Uh, so, Dr. Mohammed, any rules for uh, continuing this? Uh, Therapy for this patient? I think he must continue with systemic therapy. Uh, once he stops the sorafenib, he, he will develop uh, aggressive recurrence. Dr. Ashraf Omar, would you give us your opinion? He left. Uh, Dr. Ashraf. Okay. Next, the decision of our multidisciplinary clinic was to prescribe sorafenib for the patient, as they previously showed very good response on it and follow up. We discussed with the patient the possibility for surgical resection, but the patient refused as he previously underwent three uh, surgeries. Uh, so the patient is now still on sorafenib and he is still surviving since 2012. Thank you so much. <laughs>